Welcome everyone to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and I have with me today, Lisa Warner. Hello, Lisa. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Good evening, wherever you are listening. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever you're watching this, right? Exactly. Yeah. We have such an important um, aspect of our conversation to discuss today. Yesterday in my um, recording, I was talking about how everything is a choice, and that includes peace. And why it's so significant that we exercise that choice is that there are constantly energies being offered up to us that we choose whether to feed or not to feed. And the feeding of those energies determines our every single experience. This unrest that we have around us today is one that is constantly vying for our attention in some way. Different energies popping up and if they're active within us, they get triggered and automatically our attention goes there. The moment our attention goes in a direction, our energy flows and it increases that energy so much so that the longer we stay there, the more powerful that energy becomes within us until that is often predominantly the energy that we are projecting out. So Lisa, I'm so happy that you're here with me today because I know that you have so much to share in regards to how energy works and how we can, we can determine the vibrational frequency of our energy field by shifting many things within us, which I hope that you'll share with us. But I'd like to start first by just hearing from you for our audience, like, what is peace to you? To me, peace comes from within. To me, I was able to finally find peace for myself when I really connected to my, to the inner being, to the, we are not these physical bodies. We are not just these personalities. We are source itself embodied in these physical bodies. And when we flip our attention from the physical external reality to source within, we find a completely, we start looking through a different set of eyes. Instead of looking through our physical eyes, we start looking through that third eye, that internal eye, and we start to view ourselves as more than just these physical bodies. And there's great peace when we realize that we, we are source itself. So you bring up a, an interesting point about having this inner eye. What is the difference? So we have like, why would we have an inner eye? We have two physical eyes that bring us all the information that we could possibly want or need, right? Absolutely. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> we have these physical, as source, we, we exist everywhere as just uh -huh pure consciousness but to be able to focus in this physical reality we need something to focus through so we have these physical eyes so that we can place our attention in a single point of focus inside this body in the center of our head but with these physical eyes they're focused outward so everything we look at we are looking at the external reality and we believe that that external reality pre-exists. But what's happening is we're flowing our energy through these eyes <laughs> and then projecting our energy into this hologram. And then that energy gets reflected back. So what we're looking at really isn't as real as we thought it was. It's the projection. It's the movie. And we end up, when we're so focused in the physical eyes, we are watching the movie and we get so caught up in the movie that we forget that it's a movie. 
and that we actually can change the movie at any time by changing our focus. So what I'm hearing you say then is that if we are relying only on our physical eyes, that what happens is we interpret that as all the truth that there is. And we believe then that what we're seeing is reality. But what you're suggesting is that with this inner eye, that we can actually see the real truth. So what would be the difference between what we're seeing with those two, those three eyes, <laughs> that one set and the one inner eye? Like, how do we know the difference? Well, for one thing, we are unlimited beings. We are infinite. We are infinity itself. And we are here exploring ourselves as the opposite of who we are. We are exploring ourselves as finite. And when we're looking through these eyes, we're looking at limitations. We are looking at, well, I, I can't be here and over there at the same time. I can't be here in my house and at your house at the same time. <laughs> I'm over here, you're over there. We're looking mm -hmm. at separation. We're looking at limitation. I don't have this, I, I would like that, but I don't have it. When we're infinite, nothing is impossible. Nothing is limited. And we can change what we're looking at at any time. In, as humans, we come here and basically we're playing a game. As infinite beings, we are here playing the game of being human. It's just, it's a fun adventure for an unlimited being to experience itself as limited. It's like a ride in the amusement park of the infinite universe. And here as humans, we have infinite games that we can play. You know, we can play the games of, of like literal games, of board games and dice games and things like that. But we also have games of money and relationships and, and health and disease and corruption of, of politics, you know, all kinds of different games that we play. And what you were saying at the beginning is where we place our focus is kind of the game that we're playing at the moment. But we don't realize that it's, it's a game that we can literally shift our focus and play a different game at any time. Okay, so we know right now, there are eyes that are rolling to the back of their heads we know that there are people who are saying, okay, these two are off the wall. <laughs> you know, there is, all you need to do is look around and see that this is serious business, that there is no game playing taking place. There are people losing their lives. There is destruction. There is violence. There is people, brothers and sisters, of ours of humanity that are attacking one to the other. How in God's name could that be a game? The same way that when an actor chooses to play a role of a really vicious or evil person, that if it, you know, when, um, Sir Anthony Hopkins decided to play Hannibal Lecter. Mm. Nobody wants to be Hannibal Lecter. I mean, other than Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> but Anthony Hopkins chose to play that role so that he could do a deep inner exploration for himself as to the, the psychology of that. He didn't look at, the, at Hannibal Lecter as... Like, oh my God, I'm going to be stuck there and I'm going to be that person. I'm going to explore what that would be like. And at the end of the day, I'm going to go home and have a glass of wine and, you know, and sit and, and have a conversation with my wife and play the piano and, and get on about my life. This is how, as infinite beings, we look at this. We don't, as the infinite being, we don't die. We can't. <laughs> We already, we are infinite. So when we come into these physical bodies, we forget that. And it gets really, it gets so serious. 
And inside, as humanity, we have been playing inside this realm of consciousness that is based on fight and flight. And everything is, is really, it's crazy and it's really, really intense. But at this time, what's happening on our planet is we are going through this massive shift of consciousness. We are changing from one bandwidth of frequency where all of this negative, terrible stuff, disease, war, battles, corruption, crime, devastation, all of those things exist in this one particular bandwidth that's known as the third dimension. As, as the earth is raising in frequency, we are moving out of that bandwidth. All of that stuff is falling away, even though it's in our face right now. It's there for us to look at and let go. Because what's above that, what's in the bandwidths above that is beauty and joy and peace. Heaven on earth is in this next bandwidth. We have the fourth dimensional bandwidth, which is like the bridge between heaven and hell. Basically, we have been living in hell in this fight or flight, trying to fight for survival, trying to just get through our lives and watching all of this devastation, man against man and man against nature, man against our own bodies. And it's not working for us. It is time for us to reclaim this heaven on earth. This earth is a beautiful, amazing planet, and it is designed as this gorgeous heaven on earth. The human consciousness has been raising, and now we are the collective, this collective. Some of the collective have already transitioned, and they're up here. And some are still down here in that third dimensional bandwidth. There's not much cross, there is no crossover between the two. Yeah. If you are in this third dimension, this higher dimensional bandwidth seems like a complete fantasy land. Like it is not real, it doesn't exist. And that's why we hear all of these, oh, conspiracy theories and, and things because it, this consciousness doesn't match this consciousness, but we're all moving up into this consciousness. And the ones that are here, we are holding the space. We are creating this amazing, beautiful space of unity and peace for everyone else. It doesn't matter where we are on the scale. We are all moving. Earth herself is moving into these higher frequencies. And heaven on earth is ours to claim. But we each, we cannot claim it as a herd. We're not a herd. We're not cattle. We are beautiful, grand beings of light. Every soul completely, totally unique. We are not meant to be a herd. And this is why herd immunity is, an, is basically a fallacy because the herd is not meant to be immune. Each and every one of us is immune. Each and every one of us is a grand, infinite being of light. Peace begins inside. It doesn't come from out in the world. It comes from inside. The peace, the ease, the joy, the well-being. We have to use that third eye. Instead of using the physical eyes to look out and try to find peace and well-being in the world, it's basically like turning the eyeballs around, using this third eye, activating your inner view screen. The entire universe, Y-O-U-niverse, the U-niverse, is inside. And we have to pay attention to the non-physical. That's, we take non-physical, filter it through our bodies, and it projects out and it becomes our physical reality. This is how this hologram works. So when we focus on the non-physical, 
infinite well-being that we are by nature. We are creators. And when we focus on the peace and the ease and the joy and the infinite infinity that is within, and then we embody that, that's what gets projected out. And that's what then gets reflected back in this beautiful hologram. So world peace begins right here. It begins inside with each and every one of us. So I think the message that I'm getting from what you shared, which was so beautiful, by the way, and so powerful, is that each of us is a sovereign being. And it's like, it's almost like we're making a choice as to like, what channel to switch to, right? What, what movie, um, what series, in other words, we know that, you know, there are certain categories, right? So we go to Netflix and there are certain categories of movies that we can watch. We can watch a comedy, we can watch a romantic comedy or just a romantic movie, or we can watch something more, you know, violent. We can watch many different kinds or a documentary even. And that each of us then is actually choosing what we're going to watch. And based on what we choose to watch, we join a group. We become this collective energy because at that very same moment, there could be hundreds of thousands of people watching the exact same movie, right? The exact same show all having different individual experiences, but all in that same realm of energy frequency. So this is profound because what we need to understand then as these sovereign beings, as you said, it must begin within us because everything that is energetic and true is what we are projecting out at any given time. So here's my question to you, Lisa. On a day like today, where you know we need just to scroll through Facebook and to see that there's so much emphasis on tragedy, on loss, on destruction, I have two thoughts. One, based on what you've shared with us, it almost makes sense that there is so much connection to that today. But we also know that in order for us to be lifted out, we can't allow ourselves to dwell there. So talk to us about how, how do we manage you said earlier, you can't be in both places, right? So how do we manage a day like today where it's really everything that we're seeing around the country and other places around the world, and yet right here, we're also drawn like a magnet to a tragedy that happened a number of years ago and many lives were lost. Absolutely. And you're... Your terminology about a magnet is absolutely accurate. We live in an electromagnetic atmosphere. Our thoughts are electrical and our emotions are magnetic. And those low level, those low frequency emotions of fear and guilt and doubt and anger and sadness all of those are very, very heavy, dense, and very, very magnetic. And it's very easy. Those, the, mag, the magnetism of that draws our attention. And our attention gets locked into those magnetic patterns. And it is very easy to have our focus on the past, the tragedies of the past, or on the fear of the future. And it is, it is very difficult to escape those 
because of the, the magnetism, then we have the emotion, we feel bad, we feel afraid, we feel sad, whatever it is that we feel, the anxiety. And then because thoughts are electrical and emotions are magnetic, those magnetic emotions have thought patterns that are attached to them. So then we start playing the thought loops in our minds about, oh, wasn't this horrible? Or, oh my gosh, I'm so afraid of the future. Or I'm just, I'm feeling anxiety. I must be having anxiety because. But when we can stop and we can breathe and we can bring our attention back inside in the present moment, can we notice that in this particular present moment right now, are you okay right now? And can you take a breath right now? And can you bring all of your awareness and your attention to right now, to this breath? And can you notice that right now for just this moment, I am okay. Mm -hmm. And when we can bring our attention to the present moment, that's where we can bring our attention inside. We can close our physical eyes and we can use that third eye. And we can look for the peace or the I'm okay. We, we have to be able to use that third eye to look for what we desire. We're so used to looking through the physical eyes at the stuff that we don't like that we forget that what we focus on is what we generate more of. So when we can use that third eye Closing the physical eyes, allowing the physical reality to just kind of fade into the background. It doesn't go anywhere, but it, using that third eye, we can choose our focus. And when we can choose to focus on the quiet that is inside, there's a lot of noise in the external reality. And when we focus on the noise, there's a lot of noise that happens in the head. But when we can close the eyes and we can look for the silence, we can look for the quiet, we can look for the stillness inside. At first, it may just, when you close your eyes, you just may see black. There may be nothing there, and that's perfect. That's exactly what you're, what you're supposed to see. <laughs> what you could. <laughs> <please>. <laughs> no thing. There's no supposed to, there's no laws, no rules, right. no nothing about how you do it. But most of the time when we close our eyes, it's just kind of dark, and there's kind of nothing there. But when we start to look, everything comes from the no thing. We generate the light within. I share, I share this, vi this visual with my clients. Mm. And this visual represents our own light, the light that comes from our heart. And when we focus on this light that we are, we are light. When you put any part of our physical body under an electron microscope, all you get is light. There is not, this is, this is not that solid. It's, <laughs> all of this is not as real as it appears, as dense and solid. Everything is light. And when we start to focus on the light within, when we focus on the qualities of the light, the peace, the ease, the joy, the well-being that is inherent in this light, and we shine this out, we start being that light and then we turn into the angelic beings of light mm. that we are holding our sword of truth, the sword of our own truth. 
when we stand with our wings unfurled, shining our light, that light starts to overwrite our own reality. And when we start to shine that light as the peace and the ease and the joy that we are, the well-being that we are, our reality, our hologram starts to reflect that. Mm -hmm. I love what you have shared. And I'm, I'm hearing that there, it is possible. And even, you know, just, I just had this thought about even embracing, if, if you're able to embrace that image of that beautiful angel as you, mm -hmm. as you're scrolling through Facebook or the newspaper or the news stations, anything at all that is grabbing your attention and taking it in the direction of tragedy, you can be that ambassador of peace. You can be that angel of light and peace if you will allow yourself to see yourself as that image. And that image was so powerful. It's so beautiful. And it's one that, you know, for some of us, probably many of us, we have to really stretch to see ourselves as that. But everything that you're talking about, Lisa, is about possibilities of looking at things differently, of claiming the present right here and right now to shift. And it's not that we want to we want to ignore anything, but it's possible also to memorialize without getting caught up into the energies of the tragedy. And instead, we can start to say, okay, that happened then, but this is now. And now I have all of this power within me to generate more energy of peace, to be that bearer of light, and to be a gift of peace to myself and to all those that I influence, which sort of brings me to my peace pledge and why it's been so important for me but first I want to just thank you for everything that you've shared today. And I think that all of the possibilities of reminding ourselves who we really are as sovereign beings, as bearers of light, as these powerful co-creators get, that get to choose every nanosecond what energy we choose to feed, and that we can do so without disrespecting the past, without ignoring what may happen, but claiming what we are now here and all of that power of that moment. I know that there are going to be so many people who want to contact you. Um, how can they reach you? They can reach me through my website, which is connectingyoutoyou.com. Love it. <laughs> Connecting the, the human self to the higher self. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I have, a, I have a Facebook group, a private Facebook group called Soul Sourced Healing. Mm -hmm. And everybody is welcome to, to that. I do a live, uh, a live lunch with Lisa every Thursday at 1230 in the Facebook group. I have a YouTube channel called uh, Sim The Simplicity of Self-Healing mm -hmm. with Lisa Warner. I have my book um, called The Simplicity of Self-Healing, which is available on Amazon.com. How fantastic. Mm -hmm. I loved having you here today and everything that you shared. And I thank you so much for all that you're doing in the world and for being such an incredible, powerful ambassador for peace. Thank and so... Everyone, I am inviting you to join me in making this peace pledge. As I said, I've done every day and will continue. 
we are working towards creating more peace so that on September 21st, which is the International Day of Peace, we can show up. We can show up with hearts primed, our energy elevated, and able to actually celebrate peace within us. So, if you haven't yet received your Peace Pledge, please go to heartshiftcoach.com. You can um, access seven ways to cultivate peace. Not always simple, but very direct and worth your attention, focus, and energy. And of course, included is the Peace Pledge, which I'll recite for all of us now. I pledge to extend peace into my circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, and taking personal responsibility. What that means is responsibility for my thoughts, my beliefs, my focus, and to choose to take compassionate action. I take the peace pledge and I pass it from my heart to yours. Peace in and peace out to all of you. So much love and peace to you and peace is yours available right now. So until next time, I, um, I just leave you with the peace beyond all understanding that comes when we are clearly connected to the beings of light that we truly are. Bye-bye now. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you, Marcy. It's been a joy.